Hi viewers, this is Chris and you all are watching me at my YouTube channel Think Azura or my Facebook page at the rate Think Azura Learning or Instagram or even at LinkedIn. Viewers, I am really really excited and happy today to be available to all of you to start a new learning series management and management theories this subject is very close to my heart because if we understand that what management is and what are the management theories to do a better management or i would say the the leadership job so viewers let's start this new series with chapter 0 today Okay viewers so as usual we are our channel's home page and with by visiting to our channel at youtube you can review our vision mission and goal statement and many more regarding our channel here we go with the screen which i love the most and we talk always talk about the skill framework this is the framework we develop very consciously at think azura so that our viewers can build some skills by using this simple framework we call it skill framework where we normally talk about the concept and by talking about the concept we acquire the knowledge about the subject and then we try to learn the tools and techniques or particularly for this management and management theories it would be what you mean by the management and then what are the tech talk tech talk in terms of this subject is basically the theories the management theories and with the concept of management if we add those theories together you are certainly going to be a good manager or i would say in a leadership position to lead various initiatives let's move on viewers as i said today our topic is basically the management and management theories so let's begin as i said we are starting the management and management theories chapter 0 today and in this we will do a talk about the management and management theories so let's start so let's start with the management when we talk about the management there is no clear cut definition which can explain you in a very simple way that what management is however there are various ways to look at the management when we talk about this term management some people look the management from a process perspective in one way then there is a another process view but it is much more uh, visionary in terms of when we look at how do we deal uh, with the management there are certain definitions which are given by the management gurus and experts so let's look at the management as a process from one perspective first sometimes or i would say most of the times in real life people see the management as a process of planning organizing staffing resourcing directing and coordinating and controlling when i say all of this the people normally understand from the management that management is a process of planning so people understand that the people in the management role will normally do the plannings of things it can be various plannings it can be any planning but it is related to plan 
and then it says that apart from the planning the management people do the job of organization and when we say the do the job of organization is basically trying or allocating the resources to various jobs that is what the organization is they can organize the the projects they can organize or assign the resources to them which comes under the staffing or resourcing staffing is basically related to manage the human resources however when management happens in term of process there are various other resources which needs to be handled and they are termed as resourcing so resourcing is a bigger term while staffing is a smaller term which is focused on the human resource only while resourcing is focused more than the human resource it can be machine it can be plants it can be processes it can be other resources apart from the management or apart from the human resources and of course when we talk about the management we always think that management is there to direct and to coordinate they communicate they direct people and the resources to achieve the ultimate objective and finally the control controlling yes they command but this is not the complete aspect of the management management is more than that as well i am not denying that management is a uh, take management takes care about all of these processes which we just discussed like the planning organizing staffing resourcing directing and controlling but it is more than that however when we look at management from a process management perspective we measure it we measure the efficiency and the effectiveness of the all of these processes and hence when we look at from this perspective we try to capture we try to matrix it from a effectiveness and efficiency purposes that how effectively the planning is done that how effectively the organization is done how effectively the the staffing and the resources is allocated to a particular task or objective how effective the direction and coordination was and how effective the controlling or the command was how effectively the administration was done so in that perspective the measurement is always done in terms of effectiveness and efficiency which simply means doing the right thing at the right time yes viewers however there is a different perspective of manager terminology when we look at the management in a little broader term so management is also referred as a leadership yes management not only do the planning not only do all of the steps of the processes which is mentioned above apart from this management also play a role of a leadership what do you mean by the leadership leadership means influencing the people driving the people processes and the culture in an organization to meet the ultimate objective they play a role of a influencer in an organization in a business or even in the family we are not only talking here the management in terms of a business or in terms of a professional life we are talking even in the personal life our motto here is to understand the concept that what management is and how we can look at at the management in a different ways so that we can utilize and use the management theories in each and every perspective of life whether it's a personal life whether it's a business life or whether it's it's a professional life okay it is also understood from the management term that management is responsible for decision making and for decision making they use various techniques 
Yes, management takes the decisions, various decisions at various steps of executing the, the processes which is mentioned above. They have to take various decisions and decisions should be taken in such a way that they help to achieve the ultimate objective or the goals or the vision and mission at the broader level which is decision should be aligned to the strategy of the business or the professional or at the individual level management also responsible to managing the economic resources and when i say reverse the economic resources always it means the finances yes what are the expenses what are the budgets how we are going to utilize the budget to expand so that roi is maximum there how can we make the optimal utilization of these financial resources to get the maximum return out of it that is what managing the economic resources so management also do that job management also used in various control techniques like the production management and many more and of course when we talk about the management we see that the management takes decisions and since they takes decisions management holds the authority authority means they the power to take the decisions and to direct and control all the resources so when we talk about the management as a process apart from the first one the second segment which we which we just talked about the leadership decision making managing economic resources and authority so when we talk about the measurement of management in these terms we normally talk about the strategy we normally talk about the direction we normally talk about the influencing the people and the resources and focusing on goal mission and vision at the broader there are various definition viewers which is given by the various management gurus like you know henry foyle f w taylor and many more i have given some definition shares you can read them but broadly if i talk about the management can be categorized into various levels and all of that which we discussed as of now in this session in terms of a one way as a as a purely working as a process management or another way is the covering the different different aspect of the management let's just have a look that you know how these things uh you know put together forms the terms management so normally we can divide the management into three broader level if we start from the lower level we can say that the lower level management when i say lower level management don't think about it that it's the it's the low it's just the layer we are calling it out so the people or the manager managers or even the leaders those are focusing on those on this layer is basically takes care about the emotional intelligence and coaching for performance so basically these layer of management is normally responsible for executing tasks not by themselves but getting the task or the goals executed as defined to meet the objective that's their management level and in this management level they might have some level of planning to uh, to control and execute that goal which is given to them at this layer and they then execute 
gets it executed through their teams then there is a middle level manager middle level managers are always a kind of think in terms of a problem solver the the problems or the objectives came to them from a top level management and then they try to create solutions and to solve the problems for the customer for the clients for the families and for the businesses it can be applicable anywhere in a individual business it can be one person who is doing all these three levels i mean they can be working as a manager at the lower level they can be working as a manager where they are creating the solutions to their clients their customer their families and even to their businesses they are also performing the job as the middle level manager so the end at last it comes the top level managers the top level managers are basically the visionaries the leadership positions people who create and build the strategy for the company to meet their goal mission and vision statements and they runs the programs and portfolios or in terms of businesses they run different businesses or line of businesses to meet those overall vision mission and goal statement of the companies of the businesses and even to meet the family requirement so that is how users or the viewers we can understand the management management is a planning in one way management is a strategy direction and influence is in the another way the management is really really a complex topic however in recent terms we are eliminating the term management and mostly influencing the people using the leadership qualities rather than calling it management we are calling it leadership that there is a difference slight difference in management and in leadership when we say management it is more related to kind of what we discuss in the very first part that it's a kind of process of planning organizing staffing resourcing directing controlling and uh, uh, directing and coordinating and controlling where they normally follow a kind of pattern which is designed defined and they work with those limitations and they try they basically execute a kind of administrative jobs of course there are some level of controls and powers there they always exist however when we look at from a different perspective leadership is can be considered that where the the managers or the management influences the people motivate the people or other resources into the direction into the right direction by building the strategies by showing the path they are the path showing they are the torch bearer they are the path making people for the, for achieving the goal mission and vision of the organization so the leadership is both much more engaging much more related terms in recent terminology in recent time so move, uh, viewers let's move on of course when there is a management there are ways to do the management or ways to do the leadership roles of course these there are certain skills there are certain qualities there are certain traits there are certain human behavior which management role people or the leadership positions people have to understand and bear all of those together into themselves okay if we specifically talk about the management theories and specifically the transformational theories why we call them the transformational theory is because these are these theories if the people those are into the management roles and if they are well aware about these theories the management theories or the leadership theories 
दे कैन डू द बेटर मैनेजमेंट और कैन बी अ बेटर लीडर always these transactional theories is focus on motivation and inspiration they are bold and visionary they are goal oriented they are idealized to influence and if it if we categorize this transformational theories into these categories they comes like you know the classical management theories the behavioral management theories and modern management theories if we talk about specifically about the classical management theories and before i go there let's just look at few more thing from the transformation transformational theories they they are kind of make the change in the direction they change the process they they work to change elements into operations they change they challenge the status quo and adapt and embrace the change that is what the management theories suggest that how we can bring those change how we can challenge the status quo what all do we do and what all can we follow if i specifically start talking about the classical management theories these are the very very uh, these theories are very much visible into our, our society if you talk about the bureaucracy we will talk about these theories in details in our coming upcoming sessions however if you i talk in brief, brief the bureaucracy if you see the indian politics we we see the bureaucracy there right it's just uh, basically the kind of sharing sharing the power sharing the doings then there is a kind of administrative theory where the management is a kind of administrative task to do and there are certain scientific management theories given by the taylor and the weber taylor and when we talk about the fuel these are the uh, you know management theorists who have given or built those theories so we will go by detail of those theories in the upcoming sessions let's talk about the behavior behavioral management theories there are hawthorne studies i will talk about briefly about this there are very very you know famous and important maslow hierarchy of need theory which is very very important when we talk about the behavioral management and this is specifically related to the human resource and there are certain other behavioral theories and the last but not the least is the modern management theories in the modern time there are various not only the conceptual but from a th there are theories which is from a quantitative uh, approach perspective like the management science operation management and mis which is the management information system if you talk about in mbas when we talk uh, you know discuss about the quantitative management techniques the mis and operation management is very well part of it we will cover those theories also in in brief in upcoming sessions there are if we we'll talk about the uh, the modern management theories we also talk about the system approach do we follow the open system do we follow the closed systems and there are specific theories related to this aspect also then there is a very new approach which is a contingency approach viewers when we talk about the project management and i when i will be starting uh, my uh, sessions on the pmp which is the project management professional uh, where i will be focusing more not only generic but specific what is defined in the pmp framework pmi framework project management institute pmp framework project management framework we will talk about the pm book there but there are situational theories there are some level because when you plan something there there is always a risk of unknown is there and how do we handle the unknown is very much depends on on the contingency if we plan for unknown that will always be covered in the in the contingency approach and that is what the management modern management theories are and they are very very critical and related 
very much factual, very much quantitative, very much calculated and takes a very very important role in the management theories while the other two kind of theories which we just discussed the behavioral management theories are from a human behavior perspective if we understand this series we would be able to understand and manage the human resource better and there are of course this these classical management theories which exist in our society and in, in a in our social structure even in our professional and business environment let's move on viewers so while we are discussing the in the brief the management and management theories let's just start with so i am just covering this chapter 0 till till now what i have covered is we are calling it chapter 0 now i am starting with chapter 1 because we are just going to pick up and discuss one of the very 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 important uh, theory in the behavioral management which is maslow hierarchy of needs theory and let's just discuss about this theory in brief and talk about the introduction and the background of this theory so the maslow hierarchy of need theory is given by an american whose name was abraham maslow in 1943 and it was published in the journal called as psychological review with the name of a theory of human motivation it is this maslow hierarchy of needs theory is basically a motivational theory and it talks about the human needs and the motivations and there are five tiers model of human needs which Maslow have built though Maslow have initially not built this in a pyramid shape probably it is this pyramid is basically it which we will just see in a while I am just talking about it these five tier models which basically talks it's a kind of stair and we will talk about all of those steps which is included and different differentiate the different needs of the humans and the motivation of humans is belongs to these needs as our needs are getting fulfilled we our motivation is moving to the next level of needs and then that is how it is keep evolving and going up and last uh, till the till the last level and that is why we call it hierarchical in the pyramid there is a hierarchy in the pyramid when we show that pyramid let's just see that pyramid okay this is how the maslow uh, hierarchy of need theory pyramids look like you see the there are five levels here one two three four and five the first starts with the physiological i will come to that one by one but before going to that let's just cover the other points here this theory is basically based on the human needs and motivation which generally moves towards or upwards once the previous level of needs are met it is like a set of steps you know when we go and use the stairs we go one by one you can't jump to the another steps or the stairs by skipping the uh, you know stairs in the middle there there are the chances to fall right so we will have to follow the stairs one by one similarly this these five pillars or the five tiers is basically shown in terms of this pyramid so that it is easy to understand and we can understand that you know we will have to or generally in the human tendency we will have to follow these tiers one by one and once one is filled then we will move to other and there is a motivation there is a motivation to strive for the another one then there is a motivation to strive for further and that is how this theory 
is said and built that human needs can be categorized into those five levels and if the needs met then we the human tends to motivate or to move further to the next level of needs and that is how human lives works maslow hierarchy of needs theory lack of conclusive supporting evidence however if you look at this theory we'll go about this theory and then we will about to, uh, we will talk about the the conclusive supporting evidence if it is there or not and if the maslow need hierarchy theory lacks of it okay let's just look at this pyramid very closely which is very very interesting to show so the maslow hierarchy of needs theory start the first level the very base level of this pyramid with the psych uh, the physiological level and then the second level called physio when we say the physiological it is basically the normally the very very basic human needs those belongs to the physical needs of the human and then the second level comes the safety and of course this is also somewhere somewhere related to physical but there are other aspect also to like security then third level belongs to the love and belongings then it is a slightly upper than the and beyond the physical need of a human there are certain needs which which is emotional needs right so then once our physical needs are the you know solved well, then we move to the next level which is safety if uh, if you are safe we are uh, we, we are financially safe we are healthy safe and everything then we move to the next level of needs and it moves it actually motivates us to go to the next level which is love and belonging and then there is a, a fourth level is esteem when we we may, uh, we got all three like you know psychological needs are met safety needs are met love and belonging is there then we strive for the another next level needs which is the esteem so viewers we will just have to understand that these four levels in, in uh, comes in one bracket and and it basically talking here is that motivation decreases as needs are motivation decreases as needs are met our motivations start decreasing if our uh you know needs are meeting so let's say if we met these all four needs then our motivation probably may be little low however if there is a defi deficiency in needs i mean if our <coughs> needs are not meeting then we will keep revolving or in those levels only and we would not be able to move further however if we are motivated enough by you know completing these levels and we we are moving towards the top level which is the self actualization and it says that motivation increases as needs are met here it say that if all of our below four level of needs are met then our motivation may be at the at the highest level to do more than what is needed and that is the level of self actualization and here the person starts thinking beyond out of the box beyond their self interest they start thinking about the social they start thinking about doing ab not i would not say the abnormal things but i would say the extra ordinary things the things with perfection the things with giving and many more let's just go next and look at these levels and what it covers in each levels in few more details so let's just look at the uh, the very lower level uh, by starting it from the physiological needs like you know every human have the physiological needs and we can't live and even we can't survive without those needs if they are not meeting and of course we all need to have all those physiological needs to be met 
up to a certain extent may be that you know we are able to survive these needs may includes viewers may be like you know every human or every uh, every human needs airs needs clothes needs food need heat hygiene light even the sexual intercourse is basically the part of a very very basic need the shelter we need the sleep we need we need to have the water right so all these elements are very very basic physiological need of a human there are some which is listed here it is not all which is listed here it is it is listed from a understanding perspective that we all need air we all need water we we all need food we can't live without these three elements right and apart from that once are the air food and water requirements are met then of course we need clothes we need food uh, we need need shelters right however all of these are basically the physiological needs and most of the people in their life they keep striving and trying to meet all of these needs throughout their life and that is the very very basic level and most of the human populations belongs to this 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 level of maslow hierarchy and they they basically this so basically most of us uh, spend their entire life by uh, you know for fulfilling all these physiological needs so let's say someone have all of this and they met all of this then definitely they will strive and motivate gets motivate for the next level some may be satisfied there if some if if you are satisfied if you if they are, uh, they they are satisfied with the with this physiological need they will not go further they will not be more feel motivated but there are few who you know once made this met they always strive for the next level the next level comes is the safety needs once our physiological needs are met then we will start thinking uh, and this is the human tendency we will start thinking next level what are the next level the next level is the safety needs the safety needs includes the health once our primary requirements are met then we will probably focus on our health we will see that you know uh, do we have the personal security do we have the emotional security do we have the financial security we would like to plan for future we would like to save for future right we would like to invest uh, in our health but if the previous level of the physiological needs are not met you probably would not be able to think about this i mean probably if you are just striving for a food and a shelter or clothes or air, or because you know air air and uh, water is available to all but if you are just striving for the foods for the clothes or for this or for the shelter probably you may not be able to think about uh, taking care of your health maybe your personal security maybe your emotional security or of course forget about the financial security if you are just striving for the food shelter and the uh, and the clothes so uh, in order to move further to this hierarchy you will have to fulfill the previous needs and then only you can move to the next level so let's say the safety is also met we have the, we have got all our physiological needs settled then we got our safety needs also settled we have some resources to care to take care about our financial security the emotional security we have a family and everything and then let's say we have a personal security also then we, we are able to take care about our health then probably you, the humans may go and think about the next level which is belongingness and love and needs what 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 is covered in this layer so let's talk about this so then once these two needs are fulfilled then humans tends to look for the third level which is family then then you will see that you know oh, uh, i need to have a family i need to have a friendship i need to have intimacy with someone i need i i need people who trust trust on me uh, uh, you need people who can uh, you know have ex, uh, acceptance uh, about your existence they 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 uh, acknowledge you right so th this is the sense of belonging that you have friends you have family you have social and everything right so 
but you will only think about this this third layer layer if you have already met your first and second needs and that is how these hierarchy are working and that is why it is saying step by step like these stairs so if you are not able to meet your uh, physiological needs you probably will not think about safety and no you will not probably think about or uh, forgot about the belongingness and love and needs and that is how it works so let's say we met at the third level then we will definitely strive and gets motivated to the next level which is the esteem need few people may and most of the people may get satisfied till level 3 right they have they have got all their physiological needs met they have the the safety also covered there they have the family belongings the intimacy relationship friends family social and, and everything and they get satisfied here they probably not get motivate motivated further to the next level however there are few i would say the exceptions now so esteem needs then the the fourth level is related to the prestige related to the feeling of a com accomplishment what is covered here let's just look at it respect see then when you have all of the, these three levels met then people are uh, normally start expecting respect and they uh, when when i talk about the respect respect may be the self respect and there is expectation that other also should respect you and there is there is a there is a wish for admiration like you know you see that you know people should admire you people should see your strength and the competence people should recognize your achievement people should you know recognize your status people should recognize you you should be famous you should be prestigious and others should get attentions of you attention of you so these all covered in the esteem needs and see that you know it is if you look at from a psychological perspective and from a human tendency perspective it is very much logical because if you do not have the previous one you can't even think about the next one and if your previous one is met it is not necessary that everyone gets motivated to, to the next level there are very few who, who who continuously wants to improve who continuously wants to strive to get to the next level these are the people and that that's how it is a kind of filtration also the very uh, very much population is filtered at the first level then some of them are gets filtered in the second level then some of them are getting filtered on the third level and there are very few who reached at the fourth level fourth level i would say and let's look at once all of these are met then there is a final level or the highest level i would say which is called as the self actualization in the human behavior in this uh, maslow hierarchy of needs theory and it is basically known as or uh, achieving one's full potential including creative activities like when we talk about the people who are artists who are who have done phenomenal job in their in in their life uh, who have achieved very very different things who who have set the standards uh, for others is basically have we can we can say that they have achieved this self actualization level which is the highest level in the maslow hierarchy of need theory and what all it covers it covers like you know the realizations of self full potential it is the state of human mind or the tendency where a person reach to such a stage that you know he is he or she is able or in a position to realize to perform to execute his or her potential up to the fullest and at this stage people tend to be more creative people tend to think of more out of the box people think different and extraordinary solutions extraordinary uh, giving extraordinary solutions which helps others to be better to be improved they are kind of symbol of excellence as i said they set the standards 
so they becomes the symbol of excellence like if we say we talk about the sachin tendulkar he is the symbol of ex excellence in cricketer einstein he is the symbol uh, of excellence in science like in today's world like the mark zuckerberg and all of these people are the symbol of excellence in the media or the social media then there are other thing like you know people do the parenting the utilizing of developing the talent and abilities and then they pursue the higher goals and they basically see themselves in a self fulfillment status and they say they feel very very satisfied and peaceful though this is basically the behave based on the maslow hierarchy needs theory that there are in total there are these five levels and each level have to be satisfied to reach to the next level and there are some not everybody is motivated to reach or to strive to the next level but there are few of course and very few of us reaches to the very highest level of this pyramid which is known as a self actualization why i am discussing this theory in the management and why this theory is takes a very very important positions in the human behavior because human human behavior is there, there are evidences that you know human behaviors is based on like that only however there is no proper uh, you know the the i would say let just look at the previous slide what was mentioned there is uh, is basically the conclusive supporting evidence so there is no conclusive supportive evidence of the maslow hierarchy theory however when we look at the human behavior this is certainly relevant and that's why this theory is really really important in the management when the management people or the people who are in the leadership roles understand the human needs and the motivations they can be a better management people they can be the better leadership they can better lead people because they will understand while they are interacting with different people at different levels they can relate to these uh, the people to these levels and they can think about it what is striving them what is motivating them what is uh, maybe challenging them what is maybe stopping them what may be the barrier to them what may be the bottlenecks to them so these all things will definitely correlate and then probably you can be a, a eye opener you can be an influencer you can be a motivator you can be a person who can lead by example and that is how and that is how important the maslow hierarchy of need theory viewers i hope viewers the today's sessions you might have find useful yeah you might have understand the terms management little better you are uh, not only in terms of managing the processes but in terms of managing the or thinking uh, from a different perspective of a leadership or even the the controlling uh, uh, or even uh, from a perspective of a visionary like you know look at the vision mission and goals of the organization of the business or even of the family and definitely i hope viewers you will have some benefit out of it and you will have one of the management skill by understanding the maslow hierarchy of needs theory viewers even after if you have any questions about this maslow uh, hierarchy of needs theory you can uh, comment me you can you can write it down uh, in the comment box and i would try to answer all of your queries i would like to thank you all viewers followers and subscribers and if you are liking my videos the educational videos the materials which i present uh, to all of you and are as our motto is basically to build the people's skills so that it can be used in every part of life that's all viewers for today's we will be continue this management and management theories learning series till then bye bye this is chris 
and you can watch me at Think Azure. Thank you viewers. Thank you.